Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rehash the Rolls. Um, I am Patrick, Dungeon Master of Ready to Roll and Head of Homebrew Hall. Um, we are picking up. Yeah, we here we are. We have a special guest host. Our guest host is Adam, um, who plays played RTM on Ready to Roll. Um, he's back for at least tonight um, to uh, do yeah do to, to guest host for us. Thank you very much, Adam. And with that, I'll let you. Uh, Take on over. All right. Well, it's my show now. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see where it goes. Um. So yeah, it's been quite a bit of time since I have been on here in any show. So it's good to be back. Um. Yes, we will jump right into some of the questions. So, for both of you, the question here, get to get your, your brain flowing and the juices going, is if you had to pick a party member to come rescue you from a pit, who would you pick? And how do you think they would do it? I got this one. I got this. I got my <laughs> answer. It is Galena. Easy. Uh, she would just polymorph me into a bird. Done. How yep. did you know you'd get out of there as the bird? I, I, I would fly. But it's not the same thing. as Wild Shape, where you keep your mental faculties. Polymorph, yeah. You're just a bird. You control what you do as Polymorph. Don't you? Dungeon I mean, Master. yeah, you were able to control what you do as a Polymorph, yes. Like, if I know I'm supposed to fly out of a pit, I'd fly out of a pit. Gotcha. Anyway, I think uh, Galena, it's like, hey, do you have telekinesis? Galena, she has probably a ton of other spells she's never used yet, so that would be entertaining to see what she'd come up with. Got it. But she'd also probably leave you down there to be, because she'd be like, well, you got yourself stuck in the first place. There's probably a good reason why. Um, and so convincing her would probably be the, the <laughs> real mm. uh, problem or challenge. I see um, so what about you, Dungeon Master? Yeah, I'd probably want to pick Galena as well. I just feel like Galena's the most... And don't take offense to this, Brayden, but I feel like Galena is the most reliable party member. Um, <laughs> just like if I, if I had to pick, like I feel like she would definitely get the job done. I mean, I feel like Corvid is a very close second. Don't get me wrong. Corvid is a very close second. Yeah. Corvid is... I can fly too. Yeah, you can fly. Or can sure. fly. You can. Um, so yeah, this was a, yeah, this was actually a question that was on last rehash, and so and it was for That's everyone, funny. and so we brought it to this rehash so that way we could get the chance to offer chance opportunity. But yeah, I'd probably pick Galena just because I feel like she, I could trust her to actually get me out of the pit and not actually, <laughs> um, you know, abandon me there. So I know that he's not technically in the party currently but why did you guys not pick Artyom? Because he's not in the party currently. He's not in the party. <laughs> Is that if, the only reason that she didn't If we it? were including people outside of the party and if I didn't choose Galena I probably would have chosen Drift. I mean that would have been at least entertaining. That's still not Artyom. If we were choosing people outside the party I'd like I'd pick Karanislav. <laughs> wow. Uh, hey, <laughs> he's the same. <laughs> This has been rehashed the roles. Nobody likes me anymore because I haven't been on the show in a while, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> um Well good. Hopefully you don't get stuck in any pits, because it sounds like convincing Galena would take a little bit of doing. So the reason why I say that is because I have to ask a question. Brayden, you and her were straight up just planning to betray your friend. This last session, you were, you know, at least in my opinion, to paraphrase, you guys are pretty much just like, yeah, when we're done with Piotr, we'll just like be done with him because we'd rather have the gold. We had a conversation during this last session about not doing that. Oh, wait, about the gold part. We teased about that. Mm. But like how much how, how much were you really teasing and how much were you really considering handing over Piotr? Corbett was really teasing uh, 
about that part, about like the gold, because he's like, yes, I'm a poor nobleman, but I don't need the gold. I really don't. Uh, Brayden thought it would be hilarious, because Corva is a broke noble person right now, so. I remember that you only had like a gold. To I have name. one freaking gold piece, and I am the son of a boyar in this game. It's Sarah. sad. Sarah would like to point out in the chat that uh, who says she would share the gold with Corvette. My guess is that it would probably be all spent on scrolls before any of you even saw it. <laughs> she would go straight to any magic shop. Nope. She would buy stuff. The there. moment that they the had to Piotr over, she she's just like, all right, bye, Piotr, turns, walks away. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I guess that settles that. So we all can now, you know, because correlation definitely implies causation, right? That she's just going to betray him next session. Just no more Piotr. Like, we're now broke. So. All right benefits right there's some good that came out of this we're not broke anymore i mean you might as well be if she's just gonna go buy <laughs> scrolls i mean yeah if she's gonna just dump it all yeah it's we might as well be might as well be um all right well now that i've had that burning question of mine taken care of maybe kind of um <laughs> we're gonna ask a question to both of you once again kind of probably one of the biggest ones they're going to ask the party has done little to almost nothing almost nothing keep that in mind it seems in regards to the assassination attempt on the matriarch's life with less a little less than a day until the wedding all right what plans does the party have to kick it in overdrive and i don't know like Stop this plot, save this big important figure. Great question. I think the party would love to figure that out. Oh. All right. All right. Don't overdrive me, Chuck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, no. <clears throat> I mean, guys, I'll be honest. This is a problem that, like, for the past two weeks now, has been on the back of my mind, just sitting there, like, how the heck? I feel like it should probably be at the front of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> During the week, yeah, like, I'm like, how in the world? Um, that plus Piotr's problems, like, how do we fix this? And now, Corbett did a, made a mistake and how to get his dad out of false accusement of plotting against the Archmatriarch. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's gonna be great. My, it's gonna my, be awful. <laughs> my opinion may mean nothing. I'm only the DM, but I feel I like if you're, if I feel like if you're able to prove that you're, you know, find you, know, bring the real assassins to, uh, you know, to the forefront, then uh, that would be, oh, that that would definitely clear your father's name. <laughs> That's the hope. I did think of that today more. So, uh, hopefully, but then it, we think spoilers, actually, I'm not going to say that. Go watch the show <laughs> to see who it might actually be. There we go. So, I mean, we, <laughs> the, the, uh, time limit on spoilers is up when we hit rehash, but of the next, for the okay, next session. Fair. So, fair. True. True. So, it still doesn't answer the question, though. Very, we've done very little. When? Uh, probably next session. Next session, we're hitting in overdrive because that's when all is everything hitting the fan. Gotcha. So, next session is if it's a little less than the day, then I'm guessing that next session is going to have the wedding. I think that's been pretty built up over the past several months. Um, and this question is actually specifically for Brayden, but I actually do want Patrick to answer this. I want Patrick to answer it first. On a scale of 1 to 10, how badly do you think this wedding is going to go? <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't necessarily answer that question. Um, I don't know. Um, it could be anywhere from a 7 to a 10, maybe even 11. I mean, it's the lowest. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I mean, and in my defense, there is still an assassination plot going on, unless you happen to solve it before the end of the day. Um, we'll see what happens. I know. 
<laughs> what about you, Bryn? So back when like we heard that there was a wedding going on, like a two, I was, it was like nothing's gonna go wrong at a wedding. It's uh, campaign. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and now it's. Yeah, it's just gonna go. <laughs> you, to... you, how long have you been playing D and D with me at this point? More than a year at this point, Brady. More you than a really, year, but you really think I was gonna send you into a <laughs> wedding where nothing was going to happen? I was hope. Well, I was hoping the thing I'd have to worry about is the best man's speech, and that's not the thing I'm worrying about. And if I'm gonna role play this, I'm not prepping a best man's speech because Corbett has no time to worry about that. It's fair. Well, I mean, so. if you want, I mean, if we were playing, uh, what's the pair? It's like commoners and peasants, something like that. If you're we playing commoners and peasants, yeah, that'd be your biggest, but we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Obviously, something is going to happen at this point. I, oh, I was thinking like wedding would be like post boss fight recuperation time. That's what it was feeling like back then. But obviously that is not the case. No. No. I guess I need to traumatize Corvette a little bit more. Oh, gosh. Got it. At the wedding? Because it's his sister getting married, right? You want some trauma? No more sister. <laughs> I mean, so... that is something I could I could do that. I'm not necessarily going to do that, but I could. No more sister. The side of each all of a sudden becomes evil. Like, the whole world is just in chaos because he's just so mad. Right? If this was my Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh, well, good. Good thing you're not running it. Certainly is it. Um, well, so speaking of family and family members, we all know that Patrick has a penchant to kill family members. Like, Jelania's whole family, <laughs> dead. <laughs> RTM's family, <laughs> dead. I'm not sure I like the they term They weren't killed in game, but they were, you know. I, I guess, so the other question, though, is Patrick says, do you enjoy... I guess, do you enjoy turning your players' family members against them? And what is it about families that you just like in D&D, you got this bone to pick with them? Like, you can't be happy. No family for you. Okay, so it's not that, okay, <laughs> how, to, how to put this. It's not that I... If you want it, okay, so this this is my philosophy. I have a very close connection with my family, and obviously, um, as you know, some people might be aware, but also m most people, not everyone, you know, a lot of people at least have some have everyone has some form of connection to their family or a family or something like that. Um, and so when you really want to create drama in a campaign, lovers. And family members are what you mess with when you really want to create personal drama in a campaign for the most part there are you know and so when I have a bunch of players who present me with very rich full backstories and one of the things I always ask is to flesh out you know for the most part is to flesh out their families um so that way I can you know it, it's just it's an easy way to bring in investment into this because you know this you know at least I have found with players is by messing with their, you know, with their fake families, um, because it then it makes it feel more personal for that character. Um, and so it's not that I like am a psychopath and enjoy messing with people's families. It's that it's it's an easy way to get people involved, an easy way to you know keep the players interested. Braden is a player. What is your rebuttal to this to, to the DM's um, claim that he's not a psychopath? I mean, Eric thinks I might be a psychopath. I mean, I think he's <laughs> yes. I, I, Eric, yes. And hey, Eric, just to respond to that, the how did I think the wedding would go? Why did I think it'd go well? Optimism. I was really hoping it'd be <laughs> this an is easy. But... This is Anara. But... There is no optimism in Anara. <laughs> Optimists you, die. You really try. I didn't know. I try to be an optimist in this world. It is so dang hard. Oh my gosh. Um, but I don't know, Patrick. You've like messed with like Corbett's family, like. True. I have okay. messed with your Corbett family. Corbett and friends, like so many times, like family and friends. It's like 
sister. Dad is just always a problem, but sister, mother, uh, brother hates him now, and uh, all of his friends kind of, you know, going the four ways of the earth. Four corners of the earth, whatever it's, it is. So, there is yeah, no happy endings. There is no happy endings here. Anara is not a fairy tale world. So, the dungeon master obviously has a thing out to like turn families against each other, but we found out some interesting things about Corvette's family this last time. Corvette also did some fairly scummy things. How are you feeling about the fact that you just straight up framed your dad? Oh, so bad. It came out and then it was like, <laughs> I am literally the second it came out of my mouth. I was like, that is going to bite me so freaking hard. And I can't take that back. Gosh, dang it. And then Patrick, 30 minutes later. Hey, dad, you're under arrest. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't so resist. I know, I was like, dang it, give me time to fix it. What was your thought process behind just being like, uh, 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 your dad did it? Because I figured if they arrested Corvette right then and there, he wouldn't be able to help stop the plot. And he was like, hey, you know, just, we all know my dad is a greedy, you know, whatever, noble person. He's believable enough. Like some and then they actually did the framing for me so gotcha all right so we got a dungeon master who hates families <laughs> we've got a character who hates his own family we've got a wedding that's about to go really poorly more than likely are are either of you seeing a light at the end of this particular tunnel no or is i'm are... trying to find it <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's one of those difficult things as a dungeon master um i personally am a obviously i believe that you will need you need to suffer the consequences of your actions but i also am not one of those you know because it, it's not it's not necessarily fun to one tell a story and or and be participate in the storytelling to um of you know playing in a in a situation where you don't necessarily where you feel like it's hopeless no matter what obviously that's not unless that is what you agreed to when you signed up to play the game like if you if i went to go play a game in the warhammer universe i would just accept that everything is hopeless no matter what um but that's not what we necessarily agreed to when we all signed up and so as a dungeon master i do try to i'm obviously not gonna you know fully let them recover with no consequences of their actions but i will try to provide um, and and help push them in a direction that at least shows the way out. Um, so how do you determine their consequences? And when you put it like that, is it possible for your players to fail? Or you just be like, well, uh, yeah. All right, come along, children. This is the way to go. Uh, so yeah, and like I, I obviously don't want to be a I don't I don't like railroading. I want my players to be able to do what they want. Um, but so. Well, I'll start by saying, yeah, it is possible for my players to fail. We could right. we could get to the end of this campaign and Uxthav could just take over Inara. It's clearly not what I necessarily want to happen. I have another, you know, I have, you know, spoiler alert, I have my ideas for the next campaign set up. They don't involve Uxthav. And so if the party fails and Uxthav <laughs> is still a problem, then obviously I have to you know, rewrite whatever the next campaign will be. Um, but, um, you know, it's, and so, and so, yeah, you know, that, so it is possible to fail and like, I will never put, you know, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. You know, it's, yeah, it is possible to fail. Um, but I wanted that to, when, when that does happen, it needs to at least make sense story wise. And, the players need to be like, okay, this is why, um, okay, I understand why we failed. Because it's never fun to just be like, you know, I, again, like I was saying earlier, I don't want them to be in a situation where I feel like 
it's hopeless that there isn't anything that they can do. And, you know, so I do try to provide several paths to, 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 you know, to victory. Um, and it's just up to them to find it or forge their own path, you know, obviously. Um, the next, um, so to answer to the first part of that question, how do I determine the consequences? It just comes with, a lot of the time, it just is kind of almost on the seat of my pants. It comes from really knowing the characters that I'm working with. So, um, in this instance, knowing that um, the assassins were trying to find a scapegoat of somehow. Uh, I, yeah. And Corvett kind of just offered them one up on a platter. And so they were like, great, this is what we do. We go, we, um, and we, you know, and so I, I just, I really do try to think of like, one, what would the natural consequences to be? But two, also like, what will create an interesting story? Because I could have just as easily not taken Corvette's dad. Could have just as easily. But, and like, while it's definitely not Corvette's favorite thing in the world, Braden can correct me if you feel, if you feel differently. It's the story and the game is now way more interesting and way more fun because now you have this extra element in there of like, sure, you could, you could argue that, that Corvette, and I've I'm trying to I'm trying to find a way to say this without you making feel making you feel bad, Brandon. It's fine. I no, it's fine. It's I hate it, yeah. but it's great storytelling. It's way more interesting. It exactly. just sucks because Cause, I'm like, thank you. Because it. It, it, this is something that took me a really long time to to realize, particularly when it came to role playing games. It's not fun to always watch the heroes win. You need the heroes now. To be fair, I don't know when the last time our heroes won was, but we do need. <laughs> but like your heroes they will fail. They did lose their like... guardian angel. He kind of went with another one. <laughs> exactly, but like <laughs> I mean, you look at, you look at like the Avengers. Um, you know, in the in the first Avengers, um, yes, Eric, you did teach me something. In the you know in like the first Avengers movie. Loki escapes and everything looks like it's going to crap, but then the heroes rally and come and like, and it would have been such a more boring movie if Loki had never escaped in the first Avengers movie and Captain America hadn't gotten the crap beat out of him and, you know, Thor had, he, and, I'm sorry, Hulk hadn't gone berserk, things like that, been way more boring. Um, so to keep the story interesting, the heroes do need to fail every once in a while, but they they do need to also succeed and have at least a path to success. So. so Loki was captured. And Corvette's dad was captured. Does that mean Corvette's dad is Loki? Definitely not. <laughs> I mean, the with all the spies and all that stuff, he could be the Loki of the, of the Nara. <laughs> no, if anyone is the Loki of Inara, it's Maeve. Oh, brings up another interesting question. This one is for Brayden, but this one, I guess also kind of for Patrick because we were just talking about consequences. So a few sessions ago, we had our appearance from May, right? But she hasn't asked you for a favor. How? What, what's your thought process? I, you know, it was such a long time ago that the promise was made to Maeve that, uh, I, as Brayden, was, was able to, you know, pleasantly forget about it. <laughs> and then again, whenever she shows up, it's like, oh, yeah, I have something that I owe you. Um, it's just like when it's I think it's like Brayden and Corbett, when are you guys ever going to start making decisions where you don't owe anything to anybody else? I don't know. We'll see when that happens. <laughs> but gotcha. Uh, again, it's gonna be. I don't. Know, Maeve isn't outright. Again, she's she's Fey, and she is very just like she just likes having messing with people. Like that's what she enjoys, and she does have some stake in the whole big grand scheme of things. Probably doesn't want to like die or have everything destroyed. So at least there's a little bit of hope that it's not gonna be like, hey, go you know, destroy everybody that you love and care about, or, or things like that. It'll be something really out of nowhere, I think. So, you may not be able to answer this question, Patrick, but as I was thinking about it, you know, Braden just mentioned that Maeve has a stake in this, in everything that's going on. But, and correct me if I'm wrong, she's the one who put the curse on Piotr, right? 
I mean, okay, so that comes back to the conversation. Wait, Maeve, wait, wait. Is it yes or no? Because well, I got more aspects to this question. So hold on. So yes, but Maeve doesn't view it as a curse. Maeve views it as something that she's doing for her entertainment. Um, I mean, it, in Maeve's just... mind, it was a perfectly valid trade. One, Piotr got knowledge that he was seeking. Two, Galena got added to the party, and whether Galena realizes it or not yet, Galena is an extremely powerful spellcaster, and is a and it has been a huge help to the party, particularly in light of losing Drith, Artyom, and Kadiok in rapid succession. So. In Maeve's mind, 100% honest, Maeve thinks that they got the better end of the deal. All Piotr has to do is stay within line of sight of, of uh, Galena. Shouldn't be too difficult, right? But a lot of the delay, at least to my perception, is because of Piotr and Piotr's issues. Definitely. Does she still think that she got the better end of the deal, or do you think that she's kind of going, hmm... Maybe I flubbed that one up a little bit. I mean, yeah, she still thinks she has the better in the deal, because ultimately, I mean... So the delay with Piotr's issues is in regards to... I mean, is more in regards to Piotr's actions before... Um, yeah, so... Yeah, she... So is before Piotr, you know, before the campaign, that's where most of Piotr's issues have come from. That like, maybe didn't have anything to do with that. Um, and, you know, he, you know, uh, Brain's right. Maeve does have a personal stake in it, but Maeve's personal stake is more of the, I don't want the world to be eaten by giant psychic Cthulhu monsters. Less of a, you know, it's basically the, I like the world I'm in. I would rather not see it get, destroyed um so but so she's definitely she's not on the side of the dark priestess she's not on the side of silhana mave is her own entity um so no she's i would say she's still think sure but it, she still thinks she got the better end of the deal because now it's even more hilarious because piotr is being forced to stay out of line of sight of Sarah because of the, uh, or temporarily was because of the, um, the thing and the thing because of what 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 he did the pushing of the of Katya off the balcony. So, no, nah, she's getting she's getting her entertainment value out of it. So, I guess I will accept that answer. I don't like Fey things. I don't like the Fey. They're the worst. <laughs> They're the worst in every single story, universe thing that has them. But transitioning, so so I studied criminal justice, and so calling Piotr a murderer when he pushed her off the balcony. I want to clarify: he's a second degree murderer, not a first degree murderer. <laughs> Because there was no premeditation. I I was actually thinking about this beforehand, whether I would consider him consider it manslaughter or murder, but I guess I'm just gonna have to go with that one. But Corvette, why are you okay with protecting this second degree murderer who has been condemned by the saints themselves? That was a moment of Corvette, like not like it was before he was okay because he kind of projected his own experience onto Piotr because Piotr whenever he'd bring it up is like I don't really remember you know what happened the details and Corvus like hey that was fuzzy for me too you were you know you were taken over I was like you couldn't control yourself it wasn't your fault I didn't do it not by my choice at least and, and so he was like projecting that onto Piotr kind of just believing like hoping for that and believing that, um, else he couldn't really handle it as well. He didn't, or else he didn't know how to handle it. Now that it's been revealed that Piotr took the steps to get there, again, that is still a little blurry of what that exactly means, Patrick. But I know you did that intentionally. But um, now that it, it's it was like revealed, like no, Piotr took steps made specific choices to get there and then to push Katya off the balcony. With that revelation, he's like, 
Oh. So now he's fighting an internal strife of like, he actually chose to do harm. At least that's what I've been told in a sense. And yet through this whole time he's been with Pyotr, like Pyotr has been one of the ones who actually does like say like, you know, tries to like keep, I don't know, in, P in Corvette's mind, Pyotr does try to keep a positive or Maybe that's why. An optimistic air through all the different trials they go through. And so kind of trying trying to balance away that. It's like he did intend to hurt this person and potentially kill and like maybe he intended to kill them. Um and yet he's been a close companion of mine for six months now or so. I've been with him every single day for six months. It's like, <clears throat> how do you handle that when, like, he, he's got your back, you've had his? So, to be completely honest, Corva is like, I don't know what I do with that, with that information, that revelation. What does that mean? You're reconsidering your friendship with Piotr? It definitely shook it a bit. Definitely made him think, like, do I even know him or has he been hiding something this whole time? But like from like the evidence that he's seen, it's like, no, like he's always been there. Always like been trustworthy, been able to, you know, put in the effort like I have, like all the others have. So yeah, it's a conundrum. It's, it's, it's still work figuring it. Corbett's still figuring it out. So you're reassessing your thoughts about Piotr. We established earlier that you'd have to be very careful about why you fell into a pit, otherwise Galena would leave you there. Um, a lot of your party members have left that you have interacted with. So at this point, which party member do you see yourself as closest to? And do you consider this party member your closest ally? Or are you just close to them, you know, more just like emotionally, like, you know, you, you've got more of a connection with them, even though you wouldn't necessarily trust them to pull you out of a pit. <laughs> um, that's a good question. So let's see. It would be Corbett would think Jelani is the closest uh, person, closest companion that he has. Um, because he does feel comfortable telling her, like, talking to her. And just, obviously there's romantic interest there, but he's, like, outside of that, he's comfortable talking to her about what's going on and, like, the struggles he's had. Um, so because of that, that's why he thinks, he feels she's the one he's closest with. What was the second part of the question? I, that was the trusting them to pull... Do you consider her more like, is it more just like an emotional connection or is it like they're more of like your, your trusted ally? You kind of, I, more business so, okay, okay. or friendship? Um, probably, <laughs> probably friendship with her. Um, before like this, especially before this last session or the last couple, uh, Piotr was up there too. Like he still, Corbett would have still said, you know, Jelani is like, emotionally and probably just like more comfortable more close that way but because of the different adventures and and things that Corva and Piotr have gone through you know going early on talking to the evil librarian and realizing they were betrayed and then escaping a Norse army together somehow miraculously wasn't it you two got lost yeah no we both we got lost together and because of that it's like hey we we spent hours together traveling back escaping the army getting lost having those experiences that that goes back to why corvette's having a hard time believing piotr wanted to murder someone like an innocent person like that's the struggle he's having because like we've had those experiences together like he's like Iona's his best, Corbett's best friend since they, like, just his youth. But Piotr, outside of, like, Iona, it's, like, this is, like, the first, like, 
one of the only like close friends he's had. Like Iona, Rayla, and Tian, but they're like all have a little different relationship with Corbett. Iona being the friend, the best friend. It's like Piotr is now like because he's been around for so long, we've been through so many things. It's like, hey, I, I know this guy. Like we're friends. So gotcha. Yeah, so he's struggling hardcore right now. So you think Piotr would pull you out of a pit? Yes, sir. He, no? he would. He would. Yeah. Would yeah. he push you back into the pit? I mean, maybe. <laughs> Knowing gotcha. I could fly back out, he probably <laughs> would. Gotcha. All right. So, Dungeon Master. Uh oh. Um, but you're based solely on last session's actions, right? Which character. Or would you most like be most likely would you the <laughs> based solely on last session's actions, which character would you put into a pit? <laughs> what? You want me to put Who's a character in into the a most, pit? Who's in the most and whatever uh, explain your criteria to us, please, but what character is in the most trouble based solely on last session's actions? But if they had to get out of a pit to continue, who would it be? Uh, and what? The Frito is correct. It's Piotr's in the biggest pit. Piotr, and in my opinion, Piotr has always been in the biggest pit out of everyone. Um, and here, here, so here's why I consider it um, him to be in the so the, the pit is you know using you know using the metaphor we've been going through of a pit is a situation that is virtually impossible to get out of. Um, the reason that I consider Piotr to be in the biggest pit is Piotr is literally in a situation that what is he going to do? You know, he I'm trying to think of how to say things without spoiling the crap out of it. Um, for one, Piotr is in the pit because, you know, the biggest pit because, well, I'm so, you know, he, he killed someone. Obviously, the circumstances of his, how and why and everything is still up in the air. No, we, we don't quite know exactly. Um, but he, he killed someone. Um, so, and if he hadn't been taken to the Valley of Pelegrod when he was, he probably would have been imprisoned and killed. Um, and Piotr has to answer for those crimes at, at some point still. You know, he has to answer for, um, he, I mean, he has, yeah, he has to answer for the crime in some way or another in the future. Even if he manages to go for the rest of the campaign without getting caught by bounty hunters, without being presented before the Boyer of Vinhelm, after the campaign they will still have to face the consequences for what he's done. Um, but also, his actions are putting the party and the party's mission in more jeopardy. You know, there's now bounty hunters coming after him. There's you know, people who want to take him away to you know to the Boyar of Vinhelm. And so the party, you know, and is operating under, you know, you know at three quarters strength because Piotr can't fully function. Piotr has to be hiding himself. Um, and because of the way that the School of Sorcery works, anytime he gets in contact with something, like we saw, like, you know, I kind of hinted at it, you know, it was either last session or the session before, anytime he gets in contact with anything that's do with the School of Sorcery, those golems know who he is. And it's only a matter of time before the golems are programmed to capture and bring Piotr in. Once it once it has been you know more widely spread that he needs to be captured because of what he did. So Piotr Piotr Piotr's just Piotr's screwed. If Ian, you're watching. <laughs> Sorry. So um. So Piotr killed this one person, right? Pushed her off of a balcony. And maybe this was mentioned in a session, and I missed it. Why? Just from a purely political and like a pure like justice standpoint, why is Corvette's head not already on a spike? Why would Corvette's head be on a spike? Because he killed a whole bunch of people in the monastery. Even though we all know we already know it's not his fault. Well, so I mean, 
Because they don't know it was Corbett who did it. Oh, so it's only because nobody knows. The I mean, yeah. Archmatriarch knows. The Archmatriarch knows, but the Archmatriarch also has more heavenly forms of gathering information to realize that it was not uh, Corbett who is responsible. Well, that's good to know, Patrick, that I could still be put to death. Yeah. Because that raises that. another question. What is wrong with the detectives in your world? This there are is no the detectives. One guy who got away. There are no detectives. It's a medieval fantasy <laughs> world. There aren't really detectives. Uh, Criminal investigation, whatever. Guards. Actually, Patrick, that's funny. I was totally thinking of being some kind of detective in the next campaign. So, uh, glad you I said mean, that there's you could no be a, you could be of some form of detect like we could work if that's what you wanted to do in the next campaign we could work that out no, it was something i was just out. toying with actually i was like oh that'd be kind of fun to do i've been watching a lot of castle and bones and stuff so that's why i was like oh, gotcha. oh that'd be cool so that's fun. <laughs> but you know though it's yeah. not an official yeah it's not an official because it's like i mean back then in the mid medieval era for the most part if there was a crime and you personally didn't know who committed the crime eh, it was likely they were going to get away with it Murders didn't really get solved back in the medieval times. Well, you had to take justice into your own hands. Yeah, that too. You didn't have the money and the resources. You just kind of had to suck it up and deal. All right. So Corbett's in trouble, be not in trouble because we no, don't know he did it. There are no vengeful parents coming after him. Piotr is in trouble because there are vengeful parents coming after him so we in the, in this last session we saw a big sequence of you trying to reconcile things within yourself as your character Braden um, outside of your character and outside of obviously going and rewriting the backstory so Patrick can't use it against you um, <laughs> if you could change one thing about him what would it be Obviously, we're all happy with Corbett, but like, if you're like, wow, maybe I should have done this, what would it be? Ooh. I mean, even if you I decided don't... you wanted to change your backstory, the question is, what would you change? Would I change? You can't do that. It's already story. written. This is all That's a good hypothetical. Question. I don't anyway. know. I don't know. I've never thought of that. Um, I've never thought about that. I mean, there's like moments in the campaign. I'm like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Like, like last can last session, I wish I didn't bring up my father's name. I'm like, you know, that's something I shouldn't say. Um, a backstory. Um, I think for core of it, I don't know. It's been fun to kind of ex just see this his backstory flesh out, but um, I do think. I mean, Patrick's done an amazing job with like his siblings, his family in general, but having built even more, like a more flesh out backstory for probably his dad and like why their relationship is so uh, strenuous at times. Why Corbett just hates his dad and stuff. Um, like it's not as fleshed out or, uh, or as clean cut as it should have been. So I think having that would have, helped with a lot just like why does corbett enjoy not being identified as a noble with these people as i mean or i was just not recognized right away of like oh that's the son of a boyar hey you can be the son of the czar i, <laughs> I mean the yeah, illegitimate they... son of the czar keep in mind but like i've got the whole angel wings and everything so the legitimacy is now in question <laughs> um so go on, kind of along that path but obviously we can't have we can't have Patrick change his character because he is him um what in the past just like the past year ish more than a year that you've been doing this Patrick what was the biggest surprise that your players pulled on you that like annoyed you that you wish hadn't happened Besides people having to leave, that's not our fault. I mean, people <laughs> having to leave. Um, I, I, I mean, 100% honest, I would... I, I mean, 
I'll put it. Um, I love the. I love our cast. I love our. You know, I love Sarah being a part of the campaign. But there, you know, like, but honestly, that's what I would change. Is I wish that we could still have Drith, Artyom, and Kadiok to a degree. Um, I and throw in Galena into that mix, obviously. Um, but like, you know, I do miss. You know, I miss Luke. I miss. I miss uh, Mike. I miss you know you coming and being in the the party every week. You know. So that is that honestly that that's what I would change. I mean, because normally, you know, in most campaigns, <clears throat> I would be able to pinpoint. I know what you I know what you're asking. I would be able to pinpoint that specific thing. But I don't really have one of those things in this in this campaign. Um, you know, my players have definitely done unexpected things, but not to the point of like annoyance, irritation. You're messing up the story. Um, I don't normally feel that honestly in any campaign because the story is it's a collaborative storytelling experience the story is what we all do so like i can't be you know while i have an outline of the story and i know what the characters i've made so the npcs are doing they also do have to you know, respond in regards to what the players are doing um so yeah that's that's that you know i don't you know my i wish that uh, if i could change anything i would wish some of our old players back into the group. I don't have a wish spell or a genie. <laughs> Otherwise, I would offer it to you. Um, so, Brayden, and I'm not, I'm not asking you to pick from player characters by real people. You know, don't. I, I'm not asking you to pick which of the three of us did you like best. If you could see an old character, a NPC make a return. Who would you want to see? Oh, from one of the one okay. of your previous sessions. Yeah. Old character. Is it so? It is player character or just NPC? Just NPCs. I'm, I'm, we all know you'd pick RTM. I pick RTM. Right. You know that like <laughs> RTMs and Corvus relationship. Like that was just growing and <laughs> great to, actually though that is a fair point. That would be great <laughs> to see that uh, go further. Um, let's see. I, I mean, I think he's gonna, he is going to appear again, so I'm excited. I love Captain Leodov. Uh, I think he is a very interesting character. Very, I, and the fact that he annoys the heck out of Jelania is one of, like, <laughs> I think, I mean, I to be fair, so most of the great. population annoys the heck out of Shimon, yeah. Well, yeah, but him specifically, she just would not mind, you know, sticking a sword through <laughs> him and throwing him overboard. Like, she, other people, she'd like, okay, this is the best idea. For him, she would not care. Please let me know if I am wrong, huh? Lydia, but that's what I think. Um, but yeah, no, that is... I think I, I'm very excited to see Captain Leodolf again. Uh, just because he's just a very, I think he's very unique and different of NPCs. Um, and some of the bad guys are cool, but I'm also glad that like we've killed them. So I'm like, huh. they and the, like the, who was the, what was like the priest up in Cordovan? What was his name? A long time ago, okay. I'm trying to remember. So, like that guy was cool. <laughs> I liked him as a as a press NPC. stop. Yes, yes. But it was like, hmm. We finally caught up with you. Glad you're not a thorn in our sides anymore. <laughs> you you want to go and eliminate, tie up your loose ends. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, we've only got just a few minutes left. Um. Adam, question back at you. That one. What NPC would you want to see have a comeback? I want to see the... And maybe not an NPC, but one of the family members. And I don't remember their name because it was more than a year ago at this point, probably. Or at least a year ago. But that family that we solved where the old man's daughter had gone... I'd like to see one of them again. Oh, that would be amazing. Yes, yes. Because I would like to see how um, how Patrick plays that. 
But it's oh. also been a long time since I played a Dungeon Dragons game that I, you know, that made me cry. So. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you will, you will all have to go back to Pelegrode at some point. Oh no! All right. So we have just a couple more minutes. Um, I'm guessing just just because of what the things that are going to have to happen next session next session is more than likely going to be wild right you're probably going to end up having to figure out how to save your um my truck my dad truck, your dad and everyone else <laughs> next session is probably going to be an extra long session actually and more than likely you're not going to be able to do it in time before the wedding so I don't know if, the, if Patrick will choose that the wedding happened then or the wedding happened afterwards. What are you fearing the most over this next in-game day? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know what I'm scared of more. Of, of failing to save the Archmatriarch. Of having my, my father executed for nothing because of Corbett and his stupidity um or like Corbett still wants to save Piotr but he's like how in like a good way so people aren't after us again him again um I don't know I think, like, for personal reasons, it might be saving his father for Corbett. Everything, it's all so close, but it might be that one because it's like, now his brother hates him even more. And it's like, that's not what's going on here, dude. Kid, stop it. So. All right. Okay, so that was, I was intending to... <laughs> I was intending to have those be the last questions, but these these two questions next are the most important. So these come from some of our youngest viewers. Um, and by youngest, I mean they don't have two digits in their um, age yet. So it's very important. The first one is one of our viewers is very concerned about this, and we need the Dungeon Master to answer. Are the people who live near the mountain in danger because there are embers beneath it? And do they know that it's dangerous? <laughs> that's a great question it's a very whoever good question it, whoever asked that um, best question i've heard on here for sure um they are in danger but it's not the embers i mean it's the embers but don't worry i'm sure our party and our heroes will keep them very safe <laughs> we hope i mean they haven't done a great job of yet <laughs> I really want to know who's under two di who who doesn't have two digits in their agents watching my show. Uh, and then the the so that was our last most important question for the Dungeon Master. And this last most important question for Corvit is Boy. Corvit. What is Corvit's favorite cheese? Ooh, cheese. <laughs> hmm. Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack. If Pepper. that exists in Anar, I don't know what cheeses exist it in would, Anar. It would exist. It probably would be made over in Avaro, but it would exist. Uh, it exists now. All right, All right. ladies and gentlemen. All right. Never probably mind. have a lot of Pepper goat Jack. cheese in Mordvar. What? You said you probably have a lot of goat cheese in Mordvar. Is probably what you have in Mordvar. Goat, goat Pepper Jack. All right. Go Golanski cheese. There we go. <laughs> That's just, a... Yeah. Just hit 8 p.m. here, Utah time. Just as a reminder, if you really are wanting some excitement, something. If you missed any sessions up till now, this is going to be the one to come to is next time. Uh, Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday. Thursday. Why am I thinking it used to be Wednesdays? It used to be Wednesdays. Thursday. I've forgotten that. <laughs> November 11th, 7 p.m. right here at twitch.tv slash homebrew hall. Is it November 11th? November 4th. November 4th. Uh, yeah, I was testing our players to see if they were <laughs> catching up. Next next time, next week, November 4th, here, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. 
6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern we will see you here don't miss it it's gonna be great bring your popcorn bring your soda wrap your kids up tight because it's gonna be a wild one <laughs> until next time this is i'm no longer rtm so sadly this is adam Braden as corvette and patrick as our dungeon master love you all very much and we will see you next week bye guys see ya